here we are. We're looking at one deck from Tractor Scratch Pro and Tractor Pro. We're going to take a look at the basic controls here, like cue, pause, play, how to set a cue point, how to store a cue point, and how to set a, uh, a grid, because these are all basic controls, which a lot of you may be familiar with, but you may not know how to do in Tractor Pro. Many, many people have downloaded this demo, and you're probably curious, how do we make everything work? So let's go through here button by button. This course is play. It's going to either play a song or pause it wherever you hit that button. A cue is going to, if the song is paused, drop a cue point there or go back to the last cue point. So if we hit play and then we hit cue, it's going to go back to the last cue point. Cue up is going to play from that same cue point, but not on the down. It's going to play on the up. Some people like to play it on the downbeat. Some people like to play it on the up. It's just a personal preference. Now, uh, let's say that you want to drop a cue point somewhere while the song is playing. How do you do that? It's kind of important. You hit this button here, which is set loop in and set cue point in. That may be a little confusing to you, but essentially these two concepts have been unified. Uh, cue points and loops have been moved all into the same bucket, which we're going to get to down here. So in order to set a cue point, you need to set in, and you can then, if you wanted to set a loop, hit out, and it's going to create a loop from that in point and that out point. So that cue is no longer a cue, it's now a loop. You can deactivate that or activate it there with the active button. This little guy here is going to hide or expand the advanced options, which we're going to get to in a second. Um, and here you've got sort of your auto loop section. As you scroll through, you will see smaller values and bigger values. And you can set a loop on a fly using these. Make it smaller and then deactivate any loop by pressing the button that's currently activated. So you can activate or deactivate a loop there or there, or you can set an in point and then an out point on the fly. Once again, because this is a question a lot of people are asking, how do you set a cue point? You hit play and then set the in, and that set a cue point on that point, and I can go back to it using the cue button. Now, once you have a cue point set, like at the beginning of that beat. This particular track has a, a sort of a four count intro, one, two, three, four, and one. So you actually want to start the song right there on the one. We want to store that cue point. Uh, in order to store a cue point, you need to set one. And that, you can tell you've got this little um, blue triangle there. So we're going to go ahead and hit, nope, you guessed it, store. Boom. So Tractor has automatically stored this cue point in two places. It stored it here in the cue list. This cue list is really big. I think there's something like 20 some odd cues that you can store here. You can name them here. We could call this intro or uh, downbeat, whatever you'd like. Um, and you can change the type of cue point here. Cue point, fade in, fade out, load, grid, loop. Now, because of this is the first part or the first beat of the song where you'd want to start mixing, I'll probably make this my load marker. So each time I load this track, it's going to automatically load to that point. Um, so there, now we've got a cue point stored. Now, Tractor did another thing for us. It automatically mapped this cue point to one of these cue point slots. You've got eight here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And these are flexible. Even though this is the first cue point in the list, we can map it by hitting the map button to any of the other slots. Let me give you an example. Let's say that I like this snare right here. So I want to go ahead, set a cue point there, either by pressing in or Q. I'm going to store that. And let's say I want to map that to the two because my snare is supposed to be on the two. And I want to map this, my kick, to the one. I've got some cue point triggers mapped out on my keyboard here. So I'm just going to go ahead and play them one. So even though this one comes after this one in the list, Let's go, oops, let's go to that and rename that snare. So even though snare is number two and this one is number one, we've rearranged them so they're more in an order that we would like. So you can arrange them in a, a musical pattern that fits your needs, not necessarily the linear um, structure of the song. 
So uh, next, we're going to want to set a grid. Now, a little trick you may want to use that I use is I always set my grid at the beginning of a big part of a song so I can sort of visually see oh wow, that's the first vocal or something big that happens. And I can kind of see this waveform here, it's, it's rising. I know something's gonna happen right in this area here. So let's check it out. So I know pretty much I wanna be out of the mix at that point. Make that a little bit better. Now, let's make this our grid. Uh, you don't need to set a grid, you can do an auto grid. In my experience, um, it doesn't work that well. I like to sort of set it myself. So we're gonna unlock this. If you brought a track in from Tractor 3, you may find that this is locked. And if you try and set a grid or change the tempo, you're gonna find, oh wow, nothing works. It's because it's locked. You have to unlock it. So let's go back into the cue points. We'll set one there and we'll make it um, actually, before that, we need to store it, and then we need to make it a grid. That's the se sequence. Um, once we've got a, uh, a, a grid marker, once we've got a grid marker set here, you see that the whole sequence just changed, and now some lines have been stretched out across the song based on the tempo that we've set here. Um, and basically you've got two buttons here. You've got move the entire grid left or right. Uh, if you want to know what that does, you need to watch uh, one of our other videos called using uh, beat grids to your advantage. And these two buttons will actually change the tempo or move the grid physically to the right or to the left. Now, because it's making such minute changes, you're not really gonna see those changes take effect until you get further into the song, where more subtle changes to BPM are gonna have more significant uh, changes to the actual vis visible position of the grid. So the idea here is to move the grid to the left or right until all of these white lines, of course, line up with your peaks. We've got another video that talks about how to set a proper beat grid. You probably want to check that out as well if you haven't already done so. So uh, we've set a beat grid. We move things around. We probably want to go ahead and lock that because it's pretty darn precise and we don't want anything to change it. Now we can go back into cue points and continue to work and set more cue points. So everyone's always asking, what is that song from the video? Um, so this is an edit that I did of Dance, of course the big epic hit by Justice last year. I combined two of my favorite remixes of that track, um, a Mastercraft remix and another remix, and combined them into one long blended DJ mix that you can use with a nice um, extended beat intro and outro, and you can download that for free on my MySpace page, myspace.com forward slash Ian Golden.